This question has to do with fearing God. Why should we fear God if we have eternal security? If we can't lose our salvation and we're already safe from hell, the question is, why should we fear God? Uh, the wisest man in the world said in Ecclesiastes 12:13, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. I'm going to give you some reasons why you should fear God even if you're saved. The first reason is because He's your protector. If God is your protector, wouldn't you want Him, want him to be tougher and stronger and braver and smarter than you are? Not to mention infinitely times wiser. You see, God gives you parents to protect you and look out for you, so He says in Deuteronomy 5.16, Honor thy father and thy mother, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged. In Ephesians 6, 1 through 3, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. When you are acting up, and your dad has to get a hickory and strop your legs, this is him being your protector. If he lets you continue doing things that are wrong and do these things unchecked, then you'll have the mindset that this is how life works. And then when you get in the real world, you think you can do whatever you want to unchecked and that there's not going to be severe consequences. The same goes with God. Just like your earthly father needs to chasten you for your actions, the heavenly father does so as well. In Hebrews 12, 6 through 8, it says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. You fear God the same way you fear your dad when you saw him with the hickory or with a belt, because they both chasten you. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, it says in Hebrews 12, 6. At the same time, if a bad guy is chasing you, who are you going to run to? Your dad. You fear God because he is your protector, not just from bad people or the world, but also from yourself many times. If you're acting up, your Heavenly Father is going to chasten you. He's going to whip you and make sure that you realize what you're doing is wrong. Your heavenly Father is going to chasten you. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. But if a bad guy's after you, who are you going to run to? Your earthly father, your heavenly father. If something's going on in the world, who do you go to in prayer? Your heavenly father, the same one who chastens you when you do wrong is who you go to as your hiding place. So, you see, there's a balance there. You fear him, but at the same time, he's your protector. Just like your earthly father, you fear him, but at the same time, he's who you go to when you're afraid. Proverbs 16, 6 says, By mercy and truth iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. A fear of the Lord will keep you in line with the Lord. Just like a fear of your dad will keep you in line with your dad. So he's your protector. That's why you should fear him. Number two, he is your perfecter. And 2 Corinthians 7, 1, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. If you fear God, then this will perfect you. You know the song that goes, He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. You know that song. If he was just a fluffy grandpa in the clouds, then he isn't going to work on you too much. Someone who fears God is going to perfect their Christian life so that it pleases the one who they fear. If a child has good parents who care about their room and their grade card, their behavior at home, and their behavior at school, and that child fears his parents, 
then he will try to perfect his life in all those areas and become a better person. So this is another reason to fear God. He wants to perfect us. The Lord is always watching. This is different than your supervisor at work. You may work with eye service when it comes to your job. You work when the supervisor's around and then you lay down when he leaves. You're, you've got eye service. When it comes to God, though, he never leaves. Ephesians 6, 5 through 6, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and singleness of your heart as unto Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. The same way you fear your supervisor when he is around is the same is the same way you need to fear God at all times. If you fear God, then you'll work even when the supervisor isn't there because you know the master in heaven is always watching even though your master, according to the flesh, can't be watching. A fear of God keeps you honest in all areas. It's... It perfects you. It makes you better. If you fear God, you're going to get better in all aspects of your life. So you fear Him because He is your protector, because He's your perfecter. And you need to fear Him because of your personal relationships with other Christians especially. Ephesians 5.21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. If you fear God, then you will want to treat other Christians right. You will want to try your best to get along with other Christians. You realize that other Christians are your brothers and sisters in Christ, and they are also the Lord's children. If you fear God, you probably realize that when you're mean to a brother or sister or do something bad to them, then the Lord recompenses you for it. In 2 Thessalonians 1.6, Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. It's God that does the recompensing. He says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. So if you're a Christian and you're doing something wrong to another Christian, that's his child too and he's going to get vengeance for it. Vengeance is mine, I will repay. Now we're not appointed to wrath. God's not going to pour out his wrath on us. But he's going to chasten you for it. He chastens you. That's what he does. Because he loves you. 1 Peter 2.17 Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. If you uh, went around bullying your little brother or sister, then what would a good earthly father do? He would whip you for it. This, the same thing goes for your personal relationships with other Christians. All born-again believers are God's children. If you fear God, you're going to be nice to your brothers and sisters in Christ. You're not going to gossip about them. You're not going to do things for spite to them. You're not going to be mean to them. It's a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. God looks out for His children. And as Peter said... Fear God. They all teach to fear God. So, you fear God because He's your protector and because He's your perfecter, because of your personal relationships with people, and because of preparation. If you fear God, then you realize you need to be consistently praying without ceasing consistently studying to show thyself approved, consistently teaching your children the Holy Scriptures, and constantly working on your spiritual building that you're going to present to the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ, just like Noah was moved with fear to build the ark. In Hebrews eleven seven, 7, by faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark, to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Noah was moved with fear to prepare something. You need to realize that your works are building something to present to the Savior when you get to the judgment seat. You don't want to get up there with something that the, the wolf could just blow away. And 2 Corinthians 5, 10 through 11 
It says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. So the judgment seat of Christ associated with the terror of the Lord, it's a fearful thing to stand in front of the Lord Jesus Christ what are you preparing to present to the Lord when you get to that judgment? Are you in preparation? The fear of God will cause you to be prepared. The rapture is a purifying hope. If you're looking for the Lord Jesus Christ, Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, it ought to purify your life because you're trying to be ready for that day in the sense of your Christian service. Also, preparing your kids. I know that if I don't prepare my kids, then they will be less likely to succeed in the Lord. We see the stories of David's children, Absalom, Solomon, Amnon. We see Solomon's son, Rehoboam. And there are consequences to not bringing them up in the Scriptures when God told us to. Many people say, never fear. If you are a Christian, they say you shouldn't be afraid of anything. However, no fear can actually be a bad thing. The Bible talks about in Psalm 36, 1, The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. The devil doesn't fear God. He doesn't fear anything. Many times as a kid, I used to see people with shirts that said, No fear. But fear can be a very good thing because it keeps you out of trouble. Now, there can be fear that is a bad thing in 2 Timothy 1 7 it says for God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind today with YouTube and social media you see a lot of fear mongering when people are trying to make you afraid of nuclear attacks and the coronavirus and a bunch of stuff that goes along with political stuff about the president or any of that stuff None of that's from God. God doesn't want you going, going around being scared of men or being afraid of things that men have created. Proverbs twenty nine twenty five says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. God doesn't want you going around being scared of events that possibly and probably aren't even going to happen. A lot of the conspiracy theory stuff is used as fear-mongering. I think a lot of supposed conspiracy theories are actually facts, but at the same time, the devil can use it to bring a spirit of fear on you. And you're going around afraid and nervous and worried and having anxiety about things that probably aren't even going to happen. Many of the, uh, probably most of the stuff that people predict and say is going to happen soon actually does not happen and you're going around scared to death and worried about it or another fear that isn't good you're you watch something scary before you go to bed and you're afraid all night that fear is not from god you know all this fear that comes from horror movies and the horror shows none of that's from god god doesn't give you the spirit of fear or if you're saved and you're constantly worried about going to hell, that's not from God. God done told you you're not going to hell. If you believed on Him, you can't lose your salvation. The Scriptures plainly teach eternal security. If you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ to be your crucified, bread, and risen Savior, then any fear you have of going to hell is not from God. God's not giving you the spirit of fear in that way. The Bible's clear that we're not going through the wrath of God in the tribulation. So when a, a movie or something tries to teach that a Christian's going through the tribulation and that you should be afraid, that feeling of fear you get that you got to go through that time period, that's not from God. He's not giving us the spirit of fear. So it's good to fear God. There's fear that's not good, but there's fear that is good. By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. That's the main reason. The more you fear God, the better you're going to be as a Christian. And that's the main reason why I believe you should fear God.